Okay, Tash. Good morning. You're yawning. Uh-huh. You are yawning. We don't want to be yawning about today's topic. Today's is a big Get one. me fired up. Come so on. It will be. Today is basically we're going to be talking about how to move forward in your business when you're doing social media, when you get negative comments, when you get troll comments, when you get Ooh, all this stuff coming your way. because All the love. All, oh, no, all the love. Because surely when you post on social media or put anything up in out into the public world, all you get back is love and um, awesomeness. Everybody loves you. Oh, they love you. Yes. <laughs> well, especially because as, as we um, tell with our business clients and stuff like that, one of the biggest things at the start is building awareness of your brand, your business, yourself. Yes. And we get people to pick a media stream, social media, where they can really um, speak their voice, be them, and communicate. Be 100% all of them. So, Mm yes, so with promoting that, then inadvertently nowadays, unfortunately, well, it's just, it it probably used to happen. Let's not um, even label it, unfortunately. No, it it probably used to happen too, you know, school ground, whatever, before social media, there's always people who pick and and do what not. But Mm -hmm. nowadays it can seem to um, be a bigger problem, can't it? It's a, it's a it's a huge thing, and I think that's what stops a lot of amazing people that could do a lot of amazing good stuff in the world that have a really good voice and have a really smart, impactful message to put out into the world. They don't because of this. Yes, yeah. So I think that's what we're talking. Because when you understand a couple of things, I think from what we've learned over the last few years. It can make a big difference to then how you would respond, react, how you'd feel yes. internally. Well, um, yes, you're a human. You still might feel it, but you can reframe the feeling very quickly. And what do they say? Your you're life. a human being, not a human doing. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So mm-hmm. you've been, you have been that humans are emotional, but you mm-hmm. can control mm-hmm. your response and have an understanding and awareness where these other people may be coming from, which then gives you a different side, like a compassion and stuff like that. That's it. That's what I was thinking. But yeah, so many new social media streams out at the moment. Like we obviously, um, and they and they have different people and, and different things. But, but they, got, they know, have one thing in common. They have people. They do. <laughs> but yeah, you got, I mean, what you got nowadays, you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, you've got YouTube, you've got... Well, I think what um, people TikTok. need to remember, yes, there's a million social streams um, and that people feel very comfortable saying things that they just flat out would not say to your face Mm. that's the first thing um which is scary because that they wouldn't say yes anonymity Mm -hmm. um that's try and say that word a few times quickly and no no don't (laughs) but anonymity it it really gives people this yeah as you said if you put the people in a room in front of this um person Probably 99 out of 100 wouldn't speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and interesting you say this. I was looking, um, doing a bit of research, and I had came across a study like this. Do you want to hear what they you had to say? You are the research man. Um, no. They got two groups of people into a room, and they said, you're going to listen to an artist's song. Oh, great. And, and have an opinion on it. They would like that. Well, they would like to get you to give feedback. Mm-hmm. They told one group that we will pass your feedback Mm. on to the artist afterwards mm-hmm. and they told the other group you would not will not pass your feedback on at all mm-hmm. um the group that where the feedback was passed on a lot kinder i was like, going to say it was 80 percent positive a, lo- a lot nicer a lot nicer in their communications and in their you know their feedback as well the other group a lot harsher a lot um stricter so then and then what they did they came to the other group the ones who were you know a bit more they said, oh the artist's actually outside the door you, they, they can come in now and you can tell them to their face and they just, softened it no one no one said anything oh. <laughs> <laughs> i thought they'd still get feedback to um, soften it but yeah that, that is a, a form of like the anonymity which we're, we're talking about these and people sometimes, hide behind this yes and look i'm i'm the first to say anim- that word mm. um, is a good Being thing you can go with that um, because you want honest feedback. Mm. If someone says, like, if, if if you know our kids go, "What do you think of our painting?" We're like, "Oh, that's the best painting we've ever seen." Now, guys, when you grow up and grow up and listen to this, I still love you and I still think your painting is amazing. But um, if I was asked to review that in an anonymous setting, mm. and um, and again, it's all perception. If you told me this is an award-winning artist who sells his paintings for a million dollars and you showed me what looked like a five-year-old's finger painting, yeah. I would I, that would colour how I give feedback because I'd be like, oh, God, I think it's shit. But um, who am I? Obviously, it's, it's, it's art. It's creative. I don't, I'm not getting the message. Um, so I, I've been probably taking us 
you're like, where are we going with this? No. But, um, yes, I think in one regard, having anonymous feedback is great and being um, a person that embraces feedback, negative, positive, true, untrue, useful, not useful. As in the person receiving it, embracing. Yes, it's really important because you just don't want everyone saying, oh, you're great, you're great, I loved it, I loved it, um, especially if that's probably not what they're actually thinking. Mm. But they don't want to offend you, so they're just telling you what you think, what they think you want to hear and you're not actually hearing the honest truth. No. But there's that. <laughs> but then when you put something out on social media, inevitably everyone will have an opinion and that is great because everyone is entitled to an opinion. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There's people out there in the world that got told no somewhere along in their childhood. So um, they, I remember it happened to me. Mom, Dad, I'm going to be a singer. No, you're not. No child of mine will go to the College of the Arts. And I didn't become a singer. Now, how do you think I feel when, well, I'm a perfectly whole adjusted <laughs> individual. So when I see singers, I'm like, rock on. That's awesome. I'm so glad they did that with their lives. But if I got bitter and twisted about it, I could start to go on all different YouTube sites and Facebook things. And anytime I saw someone singing, I could be like, oh, you're never going to make it. Why do you even do that? You shouldn't be doing that or whatever is my pain that I'm going to put onto them because I didn't end up doing what I wanted to do with my life. Yes, yes, pull down others because mm -hmm. you didn't get to do your thing as well, mm -hmm. which is like the, um, have you ever heard of like the, um, the crabs in a bucket kind of story? I love that story. You have please, heard of it? Please tell everyone the story. Yeah, well, they, as they say, you put a bunch of crabs into a bucket and one's trying to make its way out. Um, the other ones will inev inevitably um, keep pulling it down. They're like, you're not going anywhere. Where do you think you're going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we have a saying for that in, in Australia, don't we? Like we have um, the tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, and, what's, and they and it's basically we're gonna we want to trim you down because you're a tall flower, tall poppy. Yeah, and um, bring you down to the same height as everyone else. Well, I think there's a million reasons why people um, will. Uh, be really atrocious to you on social media um, and write horrendously horrible things. Mm. Um, uh, but it all boils down to it's about them, not you. Yes. I think this is kind of the crux of the whole podcast. Yes. Is, is talking about this and understanding this because when you understand this, I think it can change your world, can't it? Well, it's, it's about understanding that you navigate your world and just rock on in it and everyone else that you interact with, that you have an experience with, whether it's a comment or an actual interaction or whatever it is, it's just, um, I mean, you understand astrophysics and metaphysics a lot better than I do. But astrophysics. Is it? Is it? <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's just a... Everything is a reflection. Everything is a reflection of us. Like I remember learning that years ago going, if something bothers me, it is me. Mm. I'm like, what? So Hitler bothers me? I'm Hitler? What the hell does that mean? I know we're going down a rabbit hole here. But um, if you take that on and go, anything that irks me, anything that rises me up, anything that causes me to have an emotion is, some, is an unresolved emotion and something from my past that I need to deal with. Mm. And normally, in, in the case of something like Hitler, it's it's not that you actually resonate with someone like Hitler. It's it's the injustice of it all. Yes. Yeah. So where have we gone with this? So let's go back to you've started your business and you have um, put up your first Facebook post. Yes. And you both have or put it video, out on whatever YouTube. Whatever it is, yes. Yeah. So you've recorded a video, your best stuff. You're an expert at cake baking. You've baked a cake. You've filmed the episode, you've put it up on YouTube and you've put it up on Facebook and mm. you've done an Instagram reel and you've done a TikTok. Good for you. Um, then you sit and you wait. Now, what mostly happens is no one looks at it and you go, oh, that's really <laughs> sad. Um, but let's say you go viral and everyone's looking at it, which means everyone's having an opinion on it. And then the comments start coming in. Why did you use cocoa? That's dumb. I would have used flour or whatever it is. And, and, and then they'll start going personal. You look like you... I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't, I, my brain doesn't do hurtful things. Or I actually don't know what a comment can be. But in, insert horrible comments here. And tell me the story that we heard about um, a guy's son who put videos up on YouTube. He was 13? Yeah, yeah. I think it was something like that. Um, and basically, I think, yeah. So, sorry, before you tell the story, I just want anyone who's put something up on social media and had a negative comment and taken and therefore taken the video down or felt awful about themselves for the next 
five months after it. I want you to hear this story and and really take the message. Yeah, I mean, you've had it too. I was going to say like... The, the, we can talk about me later, but this yeah. one's a really good story. Okay, so yeah, this uh, guy's son was um, putting videos out on YouTube and I think there was a couple into it where he's um, received a comment where it says... Well, he's come down and asked his father, how do you delete a comment on YouTube? Yeah, or it was a delete or respond. I can't remember exactly the words. But, I think it was um, delete. Yeah, basically the comment said, go kill yourself. Can you just comprehend that? This 13-year-old boy is doing what he loves, pr- producing content, exploring his world, having fun with it, mostly great feedback, and then... Okay, a bit of constructive criticism is great too. Oh, I would have talked about this. Right, right. And then there's a comment of, why don't you go kill yourself? I just can't comprehend. No. Humans. No. But then when you look at it from the human point of view, you realise, I mean, and that's, I think, that where we heard that saying. Hurt people yes. hurt people. Yeah, and, and just to finish off that, they, they, Sorry, um, you go. They, they raised him with such awareness yes. that... He, um, it, it didn't, it's not like, well, you want to say nasty things back to the other person or mm. you delete and get them out. Well, I can't mm. believe this person did. Whereas this, this, um, kid has said to his parents, um, uh, do you think he's okay? Yeah. Yeah. I like, I feel sorry for them. And, yeah. and do you think they're okay? Are they all right? Something yeah. along those lines, Yeah. which is how evolved is that? Like, oh, it, it's. I would just be like, give me all the awards of parenting right now. I am the winner. Because <laughs> I was actually going to say near the start, I was going to, when, in part of the title, I was going to put um, uh, somewhere about in the headline um, about being being hurt, like in in our headline, being or being hurtful, you know, from from these comments. But then I was thinking, I mean, this is something you can talk on because what you've taught out to our kids, and when they've even gone to school, but. You can't actually be hurt. Um, you yes. know, if you you can't be hurt by other people's comments, it's how you choose to respond to them. But yeah, you've taught our kids particularly, which they love, a really big way, and they try and share it with their friends which who are not like down well. at, at, <laughs> at, um, at six and seven years old, and they because they're, they're like, well, you know, they'll say something, or I, I don't want to play with you today, or do something with you know, they they'll get upset. The other mm-hmm. friends and they. Well, you're choosing to be upset. I'm not. It's not nothing I've done because the people always say you've done this to me. Don't they? Yes. Yeah, so d- our kids, being kids, will say something like, you've hurt my feelings. And what we always say back is, we can't hurt your feelings. You can choose to have your feelings hurt by something I've said or something I've done, but that wasn't my intention. So do you want to choose a different response to what I've said or done? And do you want to talk about it? And can't that, that little saying, if we understand that, change your life? Yes, because you're You can control. choose your response. Yes. You can, you can take that and make it into a, everything into a positive or into a learning or a, into a compassionate understanding kind of thing. But it was hopefully, and Danica's has totally got it. Tyler, not quite sure yet. <laughs> Danica's older. But Danica does, she stops and she's like, I feel X, but I know you've told me um, it's my choice to feel X, that no one can make me feel sad or hurt or upset. So I'm doing that. I'm choosing that. How am I doing that? And she's starting to process how she's doing it. She's playing a video of a thing or she's telling herself something that, you know, mummy and daddy don't love me or I'm a bad girl. And then we go, is that real? Is that true? Yeah. I mean, even yesterday we said to her again, hey, if you do something wrong, do mummy and daddy still love you? Yes. <laughs> um, if, if we get really upset with something you've done, are we upset with you? No, not with me, just with the thing that I've done. Um, is anything that you do or not do a reflection of you as a human and our love for you? No, you still love me regardless. Yeah. And it's super important they understand the the, the difference between, like, and that they understand that love is not a thing that comes and goes based on your actions because I would hate for them to grow up in a world that they believe that. Mm. Um, so, yes. And I, I, I kind of want to go, well, I want to go back and touch on the point with just um, – Mention it briefly, but hurt people hurt people because yes. that's that's a cycle. So, well, let's talk about me then because obviously yes. I've been putting stuff out on social media and up, yes. up for public opinion for a very <laughs> long time. And when I first did it, um, I'm not a confident – well, especially 10 years ago, I was not a confident person. Maybe I am a bit more confident now. Um, but I was not confident. I um, uh, had no self-esteem, had no <laughs> ability to think that um, I – uh, d- was in any way worthy to put anything out, um, but I had a big desire to help. So I wanted to help, so I put videos out and put content out. 
and I had a big thing strapped to my wall, a big picture that said, um, uh, let them love you, let them hate you as long as they know you exist. Mm. So yeah. I was like, okay. Um, and it was really drummed into me. You really want people to love you or hate you. That's what you want. Because if you go out there being 100% authentically you, there will be people that will be irked by that, bothered by that, um, annoyed by that, and absolutely hate you. And there'll be people that go, she's awesome, look at that, she's just being 100% her, and I really resonate with her, and I want to be friends with her. Um, And either way, that's a good thing, because you are being you, and that's what happens in the real world. You go to a party and there's people that you want to party with and there's people that you don't want to party mm. with and and so i kind of just but saw do, and then do, and does that stop you going to the party because that's kind of yeah, the metaphor you gotta so go do, to the you, party. do you still do you post or do you not post because of what's said you want to go to the party go to the party and, and party with the people you want to party with and i go the bigger the world if i can have a party with the world well i'll find my people yeah like if you go to a party of 20 people you might find one person you can hang with if you go to a party of 200 million you're gonna find more people to party with same token you're going to find more people that are sitting in the corner poking, pointing at you, yeah. laughing at you, doing whatever it is. But if you just turn your filter away and go, well, I'm just focusing on the people that are my people and who I'm helping and how we're having fun and, and serving each other, then those people will cease to exist. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that was the thing at the start. Just make them love you, make them hate you as long as they're talking about you, um, which kind of softened the blow. It was like, okay. Um, but there has been times where I don't know if I've ever cried. No. I have gone, whoa, that's pretty full on. Mm. I remember, and it's more just about protecting myself. So I remember I had a very big horse competition. Um, So for those of you that don't know, I put a lot of content out with horse stuff. And um, I was, um, but also horses was my absolute passion. I was planning to go to the Olympics. So I had this personal dream and this business stuff that I was doing. And personally, I was at a very, very big, important horse competition and stupidly I at that time was still quite in the business and was checking the emails and in came an email that literally just said who the hell do you think you are you're not the best writer in the world how dare you create videos to um and dare to think that you can teach writers on how to ride um your your seat's awful you're awful your voice is awful and you're an absolute disgrace you should feel so ashamed of yourself yeah and early on as a someone who had not gone through training and things like that to hear that stuff would I was going to say would that create a doubt in your mind absolutely like I remember at the very start I had the imposter syndrome I was like I'm not an Olympian how can I dare to help riders ride their horse but I remember thinking but hang on do I know the lower levels extremely well like um as as, how many years have I been doing the lower levels how many horses have I taken through here how many students have I taken through here I can really help and an Olympian might not be as good as I am at these lower levels because I can't remember it I was going to say I think we heard a mentor say too just say just say you're doing like for me with music for example to put it in if I was studying grade two music, I'd done grade one, Yes. done really well, I am qualified to teach those grade one people. Yes. I may know it actually fresher than someone who's at grade eight because oh, I, I just remember how you had to position your hands, how the, and the that struggles. And you remember the frustration. Yes, whereas at the end, I mean, recently, like, in the you last, just last few years, I've been trying to teach Danica our mm. piano. And there's a lot of things I think I'm forgetting for the basics of just you know, the hand, body positions, arms and all that stuff. But yeah, someone, so that, that is. So that really helped me, but yeah. I know probably in the first six months I was scared um, and worried that maybe I couldn't do this. So if that comment had come in in the first six months, I don't know if I would have kept going. Yeah, it could be enough to derail you. Mm. Yeah. But again, there was something also a mentor said that was, you know, I, I knew I had a responsibility. I, I was never allowed to let one person block me helping a hundred others. Yes. And that really is the odds. It's one in a hundred. Yeah. I was going to say even more, like even, even a thousand. I was going to say it's um, uh, every, every time you're sitting there worrying about what other people are thinking and you're not putting your content out there, you're actually, you can almost think of it, I'm doing a disservice yeah. to the people who need to hear my message. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I always knew, as I still do, I have a right um, not even a right, a responsibility, I must, I simply must put content out that can help people. If yes. I can help someone, then that's my responsibility yeah. to do so. And um, people that are wounded and people that have their own shit. So take this person that was like, you should be ashamed of yourself and rah, rah, rah. All I wrote back was, because um, it did, I was like, holy shit, for five minutes, I was like, wow. And then I was like, no, hang on. 
I know enough about human behavior. I know enough about how this works. I was like, I am so, so thankful for your feedback. Thank you so Mm. much. Um, I see you. I acknowledge you. And um, I want you to know that it is okay to not be perfect. I don't know if you've ever needed to have that permission before. I don't know if it helps. I don't know if you're ready to hear that, but I think you're great. You have permission to not be perfect and you have permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and I wish you all the very best in the future. And you kind of like sending you lots of love. Yep, with and, love and respect. And love and respect. Thank you so much, kind regards, Natasha. She never wrote back, but um, that's how I did see it. I knew that she would have, she was very triggered because my videos like what I do still now are never perfect um I never plan what's going to come out of my mouth I don't dress perfectly I don't (laughs) um you know I'm I'm just here with a servant's heart but she was obviously told when she grew up you I I guarantee you she would have been a perfectionist personality um she was an A plus student um she was told if you're going to do something you better do it right all this conditioning that then got horribly triggered when she saw someone doing it not perfectly yep. and um, uh, she just felt she had to write that and she was very, you know, people like that are very righteous. I must write this wrong in the world. And they're so busy being righteous and writing all the wrong that they believe is wrong in the world because of their conditioning and they were told it wasn't acceptable for them to do it. So they get very triggered by seeing other people and it being okay for them because yep. it was never okay for, them, for themselves. Yeah. And this leads us back, you know, I want to just bring it back again just to mm. kind of... um wrap it up and finalize that part but hurt people hurt people if you just remember and, that and they are just running the same cycle mm-hmm. uh, unconsciously i'd say because as we said if everyone knew how to do better they would do better yeah. um so these people you're i have i haven't added so you add some Pe- people are people are doing the best they can with what they know at the time if they yes. knew how to do better they would they would wouldn't they and and it's not i, I feel that often these people I don't think they want to do what they're doing. They just, they just don't it's, comprehend It's just it. running on an yeah. automatic cycle. Yeah. And when you said, I think this is just another one for the people putting out content. When you have these um, understandings, all these different little things you can add up. Okay, I've got to serve. Um, I've, you know, a thousand good comments to one bad. Yeah. So keep going. Um, hurt people. Hurt and people, fence so. around it. I now don't check emails. I never go on YouTube. No. I you don't someone go else on social to, media. Do the comments and stuff. So like as that. quickly as you can, you know, get an assistant to yeah. fence that around. And like every single time I produce content, there is one person that I'm talking to. I never think. Oh, 10,000 people, 100,000 people, a million people are going to see this. Mm. I just go, the person behind the camera has this going on for them yeah. and I've got to make that as good as I can for yeah. them and help them as much as I can. Yeah. So if you just focus on that. Because there has been, I know when we were putting a lot of videos out on YouTube uh, in the earlier business, I did see some other channels out there where they would actually switch the comments off. Mm. They, they couldn't. So they were still going to be putting content out there, but they couldn't quite work out what to do. With the comments, which is a shame too, because it's where your community then gets to. Um, yeah, and when experience. you talk about put, putting systems in place and putting boundaries and, and things in place, so I have a WhatsApp group where everyone in my team only puts positive feedback. Yeah. So I think I'm doing a great job. <laughs> and there's someone else who also has to go through all the negative feedback and sift through is there any realistic, useful feedback that, yeah, we could do better there? Yeah, could you um, improve this? We could, could improve, improve that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, yeah. So that's, well, I think, uh, and you just realise this this thing is it's it's become a bit of a plague of a population um, uh, because I, you know, don't get us started on schools, but you know, we all tend to start in schools, and we're not taught that emotions are our own, and we're not taught how to control them, and we're not taught that we're responsible for everything that create is created and experienced in our existence. Um, and so there's a lot of blaming and a lot of pushback and a lot of. Um, you know, pushing to others. Um, So I think business is, you know, the best personal development course in the world because um, when you progress through your business journey, you um, ultimately have to grow. You have to grow and deal with this kind of negative feedback and be better for it. And you have to grow and deal with problems that you were like, oh, God, this is a really big problem. But you'll grow and you'll be better and you'll be able to handle it. So this Mm. is just one of those things. And as Phil said, just focus on on um, all the things that make it okay for you. And like I said, I, I don't really have an issue. Yeah, and don't let that one little voice. I know sometimes you used to say you can get 500 to 1,000 comments and this is it's such love, support. Thank you. You changed this, changed that for me. One and comment you, you get this one. 
And 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 why is that? It's 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 you know because you is that they think of everyone needs to love me kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's a back to a human need, yeah. human fear. Will I be okay? Will I be accepted? Will I be loved? Yeah. So it's just like an, an archaic fear that does not exist in the 21st century. Yeah. And if every single person hated you, but... So I always say the only people that matter, the only people whose opinion I care about is Phil and my kids. And if every single human being on the planet despise me, but Phil and the kids love me, that's all I need. Yeah. Yeah, not saying right. that it wouldn't suck. I am human enough to know that my brain would be sending all these warning messages going, you're in big, big trouble. Because remember back in the old days, if everyone hated us, they didn't let us live in the cave. We were out in the cold and saber-toothed tigers would eat us. Yeah, yeah. And then remember also, and you've seen this as well, we've seen this over the business, that as you go on in time, you develop some really cool fans and support groups and there sometimes is beautiful humans and sometimes you don't even need to respond to comments because your community does that for you yes they 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 really rally behind you and support you and go don't... find the people at the party that want to hang with you and party with them yeah and they will have your back if a, if someone comes into that circle and starts causing shit the rest of the people in your posse are going to be like let's take them down yeah <laughs> Sounds so West Side Story. Not take them down. Yes, <laughs> just support you and rally behind you. Let's have a rumble. <laughs> spread your message. Mm. So I feel confident. Um, let us know in the comments um, how this has helped, and we'd love to know. Um, post post your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Keep posting. Take if if you're ever unsure or something in there, just listen to this one uh, podcast again, and just I think there's about five, six, seven things in there. Which if you take all those, you're you're, you're probably rearing to get out there, going now and go. I've got to post. I've got to serve. Maybe um, we can do a little poster for them. And they can print it out. Like, I don't know if you remember back in Narry Warren when mm. we had my first office. Do you remember we had that window? Yes. And all yes, it, it, there was, um, uh, we used Chrome. Window textures. Window textures. And then we had printouts and it was filled with, because, you know, running a business, especially at the start, is terrifying. So I was just constantly looking to my left. And whatever problem I had, whatever disaster had happened, there was an answer on the left-hand side. So we'll yes. get a poster up there so you can Of all these things we've discussed and, yeah. and you can refer to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope that helps. hope that was cool. Uh, leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review, even if it's a bad one. Go tell us, on. Tell us what you want to do. Like, <laughs> okay. and, and, Natasha but, and Phil, I hate their podcast and I wanted to take my time to tell them how much I hated it. Mm -hmm. And I listened to everyone to make sure that I still hate it. Oh, well, we love Go you guys on, anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, we love you. Um, hopefully that helps. Let us know in the comments. Leave us a review. Make sure you hit subscribe. Yes. And we'll see you guys very soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.